Hey everybody, happy Monday and welcome to another episode of Daily IoT. Today's episode is going to be a little bit different. This was, the, the, the idea for the episode came from a commenter, Rudd Dog, uh, who sent me an email asking me about a sensor that he had found on DigiKey, a temperature sensor, and was asking if I had any thoughts about it. And it made me realize that there's a process that I go through if I'm comparing, you know, components together to choose uh, when working on a project. And I thought it might be valuable information to see the process that I go through when I, when I look at two components and compare them. And as always with something like this, the data sheet is king. The data sheet knows all and you have to look through it. However, that is a bit of an acquired skill. I am no expert at component selection, but I have looked at many, many data sheets and feel like I have some ability to look through and parse the data out. And so uh, what you are going to see in today's episode is my process in looking at the temperature sensor that Rudd Dog was asking about and the temp 36 temperature sensor that I have used in projects and a recommendation that I give at the end. I apologize for the giant demo watermark that is over the video. I am still um, previewing screen flow, uh, whether I wanna use that or not for my screen casting. And if you, by the way, know of a great screen casting software uh, that works on Mac, <clears throat> please stick it in the comments. I would love to know. I've tried Camtasia, ScreenFlow, there's a couple of free ones and all of them seem to have their own issues, but um, I'm still playing around with that. So I apologize for the watermark. I, I don't think it gets too much in the way. Um, but anyway, let's go into the datasheet compare. Here we have the data sheets side by side. We have the LMT87 on the left and the temp36 on the right. And the way that I approach this when I'm trying to decide which one I want to use in a project is I'm immediately going to check a few things. How do I have to power it? What's the, the operating voltage range? How accurate is it being a temperature sensor? and what does the output look like? Those are the big ones. Now there's other things in here as well, like accuracy and temperature range, which also could apply to the project. And so a lot of that you're gonna get from the features section right here, right on the very first page. And so on the 1036, you can see the operating voltage is 2.7 to 5.5 volts. So that's gonna work in almost any maker project that you're messing around with, whether it's with a 3.3 volt particle photon, electron, all the way up to a five volt Arduino, you're gonna be able to connect the temp 36 sensor directly to it. Over here on the LMT87, it says 2.7, low 2.7 volt operation. So I need to make sure, does it, does it have to be 2.7 volts or can it be higher? And so you might have to go off this first page to find that information. Normally there's a maximums, like a rated maximums table. Here you go, absolute maximum ratings, supply voltage max of six volts and so we can power that i wouldn't recommend going up that's an absolute max rating but it's we can power it with more than 2.7 volts so this also should work just fine with our again projects anything from a particle photon 3.3 volt um, device all the way up to an uno and so we're good on power on both of these so we could use those in our projects based on that Next, I'm looking at the uh, accuracy. This one's 0.4, plus or minus 0.4 degrees Celsius. The 1036 is plus or minus 0.5, so very close. Depends on how picky you are and if that 0.1 degrees Celsius matters. Now, next up on this main section here, we have the operating range, negative 40 degrees Celsius to 125 degrees Celsius on the temp 36, pretty good range. The LMT87 has a slightly higher range. And so if that extra 10 degrees on the negative side and 25 degrees Celsius on the positive side is important, then the decision is made for you already. Um, and so pretty comparable though, if we're looking at these two for most projects that you're gonna be dealing with. Now. Another thing that you'll notice here that's listed right up in this section is this quiescent current, low 5.4 microamp. Now, the, the quiescent current is the amount of current that is used by the device when it is in the enabled but not active state. So it's not actively driving output. This is, a lot of places will refer to this as the overhead 
current that it's using when it's not actually providing temperature readings. And so that's very low. Now the quiescent current on the temp 36 is what would be considered much higher. You say 50 microamps, but we're still talking about microamps. And so unless you're going for supreme, super low power, that difference is probably not going to hurt you that much. But again, if you're looking for coin cell battery operation, you know, that that's almost 10 times more uh, quiescent current on the temp 35, 36 side. So uh, something to consider. The biggest thing that I look at in temperature sensors, especially analog output sensors, is the output. What does that analog output look like? And so I'm trying to see on this, on the LMT87, a lot of times a, a desirable attribute is linear, linear output so that you, okay, right here in the description, a linear analog output voltage that is inversely proportional to temperature. If it's not linear, now on your small device, on your Arduino or on your Photon or whatever it may be, if the output's not linear, you have to write code that calculates and translates that analog output voltage to a, an actual temperature value. Because remember, all you're getting out is an output voltage and you have to turn that into a temperature reading based on how the data sheet describes the relationship. And so linear outputs are very easy. The, the equations are much easier to code up in your firmware as opposed to nonlinear output. So the LMT87 has a linear analog output voltage, so that's really good. And the I know the temp36 does. I just need to find it on the page here. Uh, oh, where is it? I think it's just saying, well, I don't know if that's where it is. I, I do know it's a, let's see if it's down here. They provide a linearly proportional. Okay, the they provide a voltage output that is linearly proportional to the Celsius temperature. Okay, so now you might think that they're the same at this point. Um, if you look at price, price isn't shown here. The temp 36 is like a buck 50 through um, DigiKey. The LMT 87 is like 80 or 90 cents. I can't remember off the top of my head. And so you might stop here and say, oh, well, the LMT 87 is much cheaper. That's the one I'm going with. And you don't want to jump that quickly. A couple more things we want to look at here. Uh, first of all, pinouts. Um, the form factors, a lot of these, if you're going to breadboard them, they need to be uh, what's called TO92. And you can see that the temp uh, 36 has that form factor and the LMT87 does as well. I don't know if it shows it right here. Okay, here you go. Yep. You, here are the form factors. So we're good to hook that up into a breadboard. But a lot of times if you want to take your project to the next level and you want to get it off a of breadboard and onto a printed circuit board, it's nice if the same sensor has a surface mount version. And so that's another thing just to keep in mind when you're looking at, I know that the temp 36 does, you can see these are surface mount, this SOT uh, form factor is a surface mount version. So if you wanted to take your project again, put it on a PCB at some point, you don't have to redesign around the sensor, you can just get the different form factor. And so I don't see an SMD version of this. So that may or may not be a deal breaker, but something to consider. Now, I wanna scroll down here, and the reason that I'm making this video, which is to point out how sometimes you have to dig a little deeper. And so when we come down here in the LMT87, we talk about the LMT87 transfer function. This is the output voltage across the operating, the complete operating temperature range. And they have this big transfer table. Now, one thing that I noticed when I scrolled down through here, it says, although the LMT87 is very linear, the response does have a slight umbrella parabolic shape. Here's the equation that you would need to create in your firmware to output the most accurate temperature. And so this is a little bit gnarly if you're writing firmware in C code. And so if we take a look at the temp 36 and we come down here, in fact, I don't even think we need to go down there. I think it says it right up in, up in this section here, right here. The temp 36 have an output scale factor of 10 millivolts per degree Celsius. So they're saying on the temp 36, 
for every 10 millivolts change of output voltage, it is one degree Celsius. So the, the equation is very simple to solve for temperature in your firmware. So that is, is something that's easier to calculate than the, this, you know, parabolic, umbrella parabolic shape that we have over here on the LMT87. And so the, the temp 36, I do know, I'm just haven't gone through the data sheet in a little bit, has an offset that you need to account for, but that's just adding a constant value back in. Here we go, temp 36, the offset voltage is 0.5 volts. And then the output scaling, output voltage scaling, 10 millivolts equals one degree Celsius. And then it gives you the output voltage at 25 degrees Celsius. So as far as firmware is concerned, the temp 36 is gonna be much easier to calculate um, from that analog voltage that you get on the output pin as opposed to the LMT87. And so if I had to make a recommendation purely based on those things, again, you may need certain specs, again, the temperature range or um, the low, low quiescent current of the LMT87. But if not, and this is just a simple hobby project that you're trying to put together, I would definitely lean towards the temp 36 as you pay a little bit more and, but you know, buck 50 versus 90 cents. I mean, I don't think that's going to break the bank and that, that extra cost gets you the simplified firmware implementation where you don't have to mess with that, that slightly nonlinear output of the LMT 87. And so that is the approach. That's just a quick overview of the, of how I would look at two data sheets side by side. Again, I am not an expert on component selection. I just, those are the simple things that I look at to try and determine which component I want to use in my hobby projects. So, all right, that's it. That's the episode for today. Just a little bit of data sheet action. I hope that was useful um, to you and seeing how I go through the process of comparing things using their data sheets and making a selection. So uh, question of the day, do you have a favorite temperature sensor that you have used in your projects? Please stick it in the comments below. I appreciate everybody watching Daily IoT, the show where together we're learning how to make the internet of things one day at a time.